Well, here I am in Tinsley Wood near Pershaw, not far from Pershaw College. Um, wandering around, um, as many of you know, I do quite frequently, uh, come across this wonderful fruiting body. Uh, where are we? We're in the middle of June, so it's just about the right time to find this one. Commonly known as the, the oak bracket. Uh, used to be known as Inonotus drydus. Now we know it as pseudo Inonotus drydus. Um, but if you want to call it the oak bracket for now, that's fine, and we'll work on the Latin names later. Looks a bit like some expanded foam that's been sprayed in between the buttress roots of the tree. Um, not many other fruiting bodies look like this, and this one's distinctive because you can see these, it oozes out some lovely drops of moisture all over the fruiting body. Um, it's just like water. Um, and what that's doing, it's pulling the moisture from inside the tree out into the fruiting body in order for it to decay further inside the middle of the tree. Pseudo Inonotus drydus, it's a white rot, okay? Um, now, many of you will see on social media, on Facebook, on Arb Talk, uh, arborists and tree surgeons, they post pictures of fungi and people think, oh, a tree's got a lump of fungi on it, we've got to fell and remove that tree. Not so, not necessarily so. In this instance, this oak tree is in the middle of a woodland. There are no targets, there are no footpaths here. I've wandered inside the woodland to actually find this. Um, if this tree were to blow over, which it probably won't do, it's very unlikely it's gonna hit anybody or destroy any people, persons, or property. When you come across fungi, maybe in the middle of town, maybe in a park, a green open space, near a set of traffic lights or a building, and a tree does show a fruiting body, then we need to do some further investigation because we want to know how much of the inside of the tree, the fungi inside of the tree, has decayed. The simplest way we do that is to tap it with a mallet. We can hit it here, we can hit it up here, and we listen to the different tones that that makes, which is all very well. It can give you an indication of where the decay is, but we can't quantify the extent of decay. We can't write a tree report, and write in our report, we hit the tree with a rubber mallet. We could do, but it wouldn't sound terribly professional. Um, so there are various means and, and, and ways we can survey the tree in order to detect how much decay is in the inside of the tree. Uh, one of those is to use a resistor graph. You might have seen one of those. We've got one in college. We'll spend some time using a resistor graph. And that is a very small drill. And it puts the drill, it drills inside the tree. And what the resistor graph does, it measures the resistance of that drill bit. That drill bit drills through a set amount of time where it goes through good wood, you'll see a graph. You can actually see the annual rings of the graph. And when it goes in further and it reaches decayed wood, that graph will drop down to virtually nothing if there was a hollow. And we could drill it in four points, usually four points of the compass. We can print those reports out, put them in our report, and we can work out the TR ratio, how much decay is inside the tree. Uh, the other method we can use is um, do a picker survey and produce a tomograph, which is a, a coloured image of the inside of this tree. Again, we've got one at college. Um, we'll dig it out and we'll, we'll have a play with that. Um, both the Picus 3 and the resistor graph um, is in what we call invasive. Uh, the resistor graph definitely is invasive because it drills a very small hole through it. Uh, the Picus 3 works by you attach 12 or more um, galvanized nails. You don't hit them all the way into the tree, you just go through the bark until they touch the sapwood. And then you tap those nails with a special mallet and that sends sound waves through the, through the tree and picks it up on the sensor. I'd call that semi-invasive. You're not drilling a dirty great hole through the center of the tree, 
uh, but you are still damaging that bark, going through the cambium, and you're touching the sapwood. But if you've got a very large tree next to a potential target, you've got to quantify the strength of that tree. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to fell the tree. You could just monitor it after you've done a resistor graph, after you've done produced a, a tomograph, you could have a look at the results and there might be just a small amount of decay inside the tree. So you guys have a think what we could implement on that tree as a precautionary measure in order to retain it for longer. We could carry out a crown reduction. We could carry out a crown thin. I always think of trees as a sailboat. You've got the shell of the boat, the hull of the boat, those are the roots. You've got the mast, that's the main stem, and you've got the sail, and that's the crown of the tree. So if we reduce the crown, make it smaller, in effect, we're making that sail smaller. So we're taking away some of the stresses on the lower part of the tree and the roots. You could carry out a crown thin, which is in effect punching holes through that sail. We're allowing wind to pass through the crown of the tree a little easier. Again, it's taking stress, some of the stress, and wave away from the, the lower main stem and the root system. But we must get out of this thing saying, oh, this tree's got a fungi, chop it down. That's, that's wrong, okay? Um, there are many different species of fungi. Each different species of fungi decays trees in a different way. Um, and there'll be different management recommendations that we carry out on that tree. Um, you know, you guys have come across uh, Critzmeria juicea. That's about the only fungi that I would say, or in the woods, fair enough, keep the tree. It's fine. It's good habitat for the birds and the invertebrates. Um, but if there was a target and the tree had Critzmeria, then we would definitely, we'd remove that tree. A lot of trees adapt. When fungi are, uh, are host to that tree, they're inside the tree, the mycelium is, is, is busy and it's at work and it's degrading some of the, some of the wood. The trees can adapt. They can detect that change and they put on what we call reaction wood. And this is a great example. It's quite, it's quite a young oak tree, actually. It's quite unusual to have pseudo inotus on the side of it. But th this tree is detected that it's host to a fungal fruiting body and some of the wood inside is being degraded and eaten away. And it puts on adaptive growth. And you can see the, bear in mind, we're in the middle of a wood. It's quite sheltered. There are trees surrounding us in here. And yet this tree has got really, really good buttress formation. Good formation there, good formation there. And again, some really good buttress formation there. So it's putting on adaptive growth in these regions in order to strengthen it, which is great. So the tree is keeping up with the decay inside the tree. Each year it puts on a little bit of more growth here, here and over there, which is great. The problem we have in, in towns and cities and some green open spaces, not necessarily in woodland, is that trees can become stressed. They can become compacted. They can get damaged. The root systems can become damaged. The crowns can be reduced by 30, 40%. So it's, it's photosynthetic capabilities have been reduced and that can cause stress. It's a bit like you and I, if we were really, really ill, um, if we had an illness and we went into hospital, and they want to, uh, wanted to operate on us, the surgeons would probably say, no, stop, go away, recover from your illness, get better, and then we'll operate and you'll recover a lot quicker. Same thing with trees. So if this particular oak was stressed for one reason or another, perhaps it was suffering from compaction it wouldn't put on quite so much, or if any, incremental growth each year. So that balance of decay and growth, growth will change. The decay will increase and the growth will decrease. So that cavity inside 
could get larger and larger. And that's when eventually, if we get high winds, maybe at an unusual time of the year, maybe in summer we're getting more and more inclement weather, uh, extreme weather in unusual times of the year. So the trees in full leaf, high winds from an unusual direction, that's when trees blow over, all right? If you're having trouble learning the fungi and remembering the fungi, uh, there are, you know, there, there are apps available. There are some very good websites you can go on um, in order to, you know, help help you learn these species of fungi. Uh, I've got one on my phone, um, TMA fungi. I'm going to try it now, um, see what it comes up with. So, open the app up. I'm going to put my glasses on on this, um, and it asks for. There are two ways you can search for it. You can search for either the fungi or you can search via the, the tree species. We know this is an oak tree. We know this is a fruiting body. We know it's affecting the lower main stem, okay? So I'm gonna type in oak tree, oak. There we go, oak species. And now we go on to three parts of the tree. We've got the crown, we've got the stem, and we've got the, the roots and the ground. Um, we're in between the stem and the ground. So to play it safe, I'm going to go for root and ground. Okay, so click there and it will come up with a list of all the species of fungi that affect species of oak trees in that location. So let's just scroll through. And we'll see if we can spot one that looks like our fruiting body. Not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Got to wait for the pictures to load up. There we go. Absolute dead match. Okay. So we click on that, Pseudoinotus us, otherwise known as the Eiffel Tower fungi. They call it the Eiffel Tower fungi for this exact reason. It's decaying the inside of the tree, the heartwood on the inside of the tree. It's a healthy tree. It's putting on adaptive growth. So these buttresses are getting bigger. And if you have a look at the picture of the Eiffel Tower, it does exactly the same thing, okay? It's got a wide base supporting a tall stem, the Eiffel Tower fungus. So it'll tell you, view description, gives you some more pictures that you can go through. It's say fruiting bodies, some degrade with age, so they look they look different depending on whether they're young fruiting bodies or old fruiting bodies. Common name, often found on oak, Quercus roba. Location, generally lower main stem in between the buttresses. Gives you a nice description. Confused with, lists some other species of fungi that are quite similar. And the significance, decay considered to be very slow through hollowing does ensure. Trees often can be persist with the fungus and develop in sand buttresses. Failure rarely observed. Um, we had a very, very large tree in Worcester, at Dover Avenue in Worcester. Um, and that had, it was a huge tree, still there, absolutely enormous. And it was on the, the new housing estate in Warnden Villages. And the whole estate was planned and built around this tree. So you can imagine we had a large green open space and all the houses dotted around. And I went and surveyed this tree and it had pseudo notice all around it. It would be a travesty to fell that tree and remove it because, you know, so all these houses were based around this one beautiful, beautiful tree. Um, so I surveyed the tree and I came up with a management decision to, to gradually reduce that crown. So on reducing the size of those ship sails. Um, and we did it over, a, we did a phased reduction so the first reduction we did, we did a 20%, no, actually we, don't, we did about a 30% reduction. I wanted to get a lot of weight off that crown. So reduce it by 30%, let the tree recover, let it put some more growth on, lower down in the crown, and come back again in five years time, three to five years time, and reduce it again. Wait another three to five years and reduce it again. And by doing that, we're bringing that tree lower and lower and lower. We're making it more compact. We're bringing those sails in, in other words. Uh, and that's called retrenchment. 
Trees do that naturally. As trees get old, um, they sort of hunker on down, they get shorter, much like us. Here are my fungi. We can search for fungi, we can search for trees. So there's trees, we'll type in oak. There we go, Quercus species. Press go. Uh, is the fungi affecting the crown, the stem, or the roots and the ground? So we're gonna go for roots and ground, and it comes up with various different fungi. Keep going, keep going. Doesn't look like that one, doesn't look like that one. There we go, pseudo in the know, just try this. So click on the description. There's some different images of it, with various ages of the fruiting body. Scroll down, common name, often found on, sometimes found on, location, description, significance. That's a really good app, that's TMA fungi.